Hi everybody, my name is Eriberto Godina, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the status of literacy in Laredo and Texas, implications and challenges for the science of teaching reading. My research questions include how, basically I wanted to explore demographics. So I wanted to understand what are the current what is the current demographic status of literacy among children in the Laredo region? And I wanted to also compare it to uh, the United States and Texas, and also um, correlate it with other ethnic groups, predominantly white, African American, and Asian. And I, I wanted to understand what are the present day challenges that are revealed by this data and I also wanted to begin to explore how can we uh, find some remediations, what can we do to improve uh, literacy rates in, in, in the Laredo region. And I take an interest in this because, you know, I, I feel that strongly about understanding demographic trends will will allow me to better prepare teacher candidates. And th this is my primary role here at the university where I'm responsible for teaching undergraduates uh, in the science of teaching reading. And the science of teaching reading is now an exam that all teachers have to take. So uh, while well, all teacher candidates going through a college of education, they have to take uh, this exam in order to qualify to become a teacher. And I also wanted to understand, of course, the implications for these demographic trends, not just for my future teachers, but also for solutions we can work on together to uh, impact, hopefully impact in a positive way, um, the trend you know, toward uh, uh, literacy, toward successful literacy practices. My data sources include uh, looking at NAEP data, what's known as NAEP data, uh, the National Assessment for Educational Progress. And I also looked at TAPER reports, uh, Texas Academic Performance Report, which are comprehensive reports. And I focused on uh, Laredo IS ISD, Independent School District, and United Independent School District. I also, uh, in light of these demographic trends, I also uh, relied on the science of teaching reading uh, research, which is a kind of like a, an approach toward teaching literacy that's research-based. And so I, I uh, con considered seriously that, that bibliography. And I'll discuss some of that later on in this presentation. And I wanted to examine the data for all groups, but I wanted to pay particular attention to students of Mexican descent, uh, Hispanic students in the Laredo region, because as we all know, working around Laredo, uh, the Hispanic population is very high. Uh, the data defined certain literacy levels, and I wanted to talk about those in terms of how I explored uh, literacy levels. And so the literacy levels I wanted to focus on were uh, proficient, even though the data will report below basic, or which is similar to approaches grade level. Basically, uh, that category did not meet the standard for learning how to read. Uh, and then basic is just when the student meets grade level. It's like they just barely made it to grade level, uh, but relatively low. Now, there's two other categories, proficient, which is means that they're reading at a decent level for their, uh, for their uh, grade. And then also, uh, there's advanced. That's a category in the uh, NAEP data. And I also wanted to look at fourth grade and compare it to eighth grade because uh, early literacy is critical. Uh, science of reading sh uh, 
shows, the research shows, that the earlier uh, children learn how to read, the better off they're going to be in terms of um, their reading performance in subsequent grades. So early childhood is considered an optimum time uh, to learn how to read. And then also there's another factor that I wanted to consider which is called the fourth grade slump. And I wanted to figure out if that fourth grade slump was indeed true for students in this region. And the fourth grade slump basically means that students actually begin to perform worse after fourth grade. And I'll explain a little bit more why in a bit. And basically, this demographic data in early childhood uh, is really revealing data for the adult population. And there are some states that even begin to calculate uh, the prison bed, you know, uh, the number of prison beds that are going to need uh, to, based on the early literacy scores. And that's, that's kind of a crazy uh, algorithm, but that's uh, how important early literacy rates are in terms of their predictive validity. So once we get at, you know, like the proficient level, once we begin to examine it, uh, look, let's look at uh, Laredo ISD first from the taper report. And these are third grade uh, scores. And, um, and you have the three categories there. You have the categories for approaches, and right, approaches means grade level and master's grade level. And master's grade level is really the point where they achieve proficiency, right? And there's, there, there are correlations there in this taper report between 21 and 22 data, 2021 and 2022 data for the state and the region. We, we fall under region one and the district. And we're doing slightly lower than the state, but we're picking up from 2021. And 2021 was a horrible year for literacy performance in terms of standardized tests in literacy because we were coming uh, out of COVID and um, a lot of teachers ramped up instruction post-COVID. And so you see that sharp increase between 12% to 28%, which is, pretty close to what's happening around the region and in Texas, right, for, for Hispanic students. And this one is for Laredo ISD, where a large number of students are Hispanic in that district. And for the next uh, batch, I looked at United ISD, and there we can clearly see that uh, there's a slight improvement in terms of uh, being at 29%, but not much different from Laredo ISD. But what's interesting is when, uh, because uh, United ISD is a more diverse student population, they, they have, a, a, they have a, a tabulation for whites and also Asians, which who are at 56% and 63% versus 29% uh, for um, Mexicans and 28, you know, Laredo was at 28 and United is at 29%. So pretty close, com com pretty comparable when you look at district performance and uh, both I United ISD and Laredo ISD were coming out of, uh, you know, COVID. And so they really improved their score significantly. Now, when we look at uh, NAEP data, which is the national assessment, and I specifically also focused on Texas and the nation. And the, the bar over here shows us the proficiency level right here. So these are our proficiency ratings. These are advanced, and these are, again, for previous years, for 2019 in Texas, 1998, and not much change overall in Texas for, you know, 23%. Uh, and here 
and, and compared to the nation, 24% uh, proficient, right? Which is pretty comparable. It's pretty, pretty good correlation with national trend for literacy. And this is in fourth grade for all students. Now, this is a, an aggregate uh, literacy score for all students. And, you know, one out of four students, but it's not, not bad. Right, but it's when we break down the scores, when we break down NAEP data in fourth grade, we begin to see some discrepancies, especially among Hispanic students in Texas. So the NAEP data as a fourth grade, you can see that 20% uh, of the students are reading proficient, which is one out of five students are reading proficiently in fourth grade. and. Females are doing slightly better than males, right, in fourth grade. So that's kind of like um, something that I'll factor in later. And so when you disaggregate the scores, uh, you're going to see marked differences by ethnicity. So uh, whites are at 44% proficient, and Asians are amazingly at 71% proficient for literacy at the fourth grade level. And then when we look at eighth grade, we see some important kind of like um, trends in the statistics. Uh, Hispanics actually become, uh, get lower, right? They go from 20% to 16% in eighth grade. And then you also see a divergence between males and females, where 21 and 25%. And so you do see a gender split, and you see uh, worse performance in terms of eighth grade. And this is very kind of important for later because the significant reality of literacy in our region, only one out of every five or six Hispanic students are proficient at reading by the time they reach fourth grade, right? And this is pretty bad. And females continue to perform slightly better than males. And that gap increases as, as they get older. And Hispanic literacy rates continue to decline after fourth grade. And in considering the divergence between Laredo and United ISD, United being a more affluent school district, uh, class-based status does mitigate literacy development with low income males being most at risk in our region. So uh, low SES is a factor in low literacy performance and the results reveal some science of reading uh, kind of conclusions about literacy performance, namely the data confirms the existence of a fourth grade slump. In other words, when students make the shift between learning to read to reading to learn, that's, that's the notable marker from third grade to fourth grade. See, in fourth grade, uh, students are no longer learning how to read. The assumption there being is that they've learned how to read between kindergarten and third grade, which is the target time for early literacy instruction. And uh, they begin to apply what they've learned uh, in terms of their reading ability in fourth grade. So they, they, they've made the shift from learning to read to reading to learn. And no, most notably is uh, because this has been attributed to many factors, but one of the factors is uh, poor reading instruction. So a lot of uh, science of reading uh, research uh, tends to point the finger at teachers because they uh, don't teach reading properly in the early grade levels. You see this uh, huge drop. And this could be a holdover from previous years where teachers may have been very comfortable with, hey, say, a whole language approach or used other methodology. Remember that uh, science of reading um, training didn't take effect till about 2019, 2020, when, when it became, it got passed into uh, Texas law. 
uh, right before COVID hit. And so this, the science of reading application and the science of reading qualification is still a kind of a new thing for uh, many teachers. So they may have been applying these old methods. So I'm kind of waiting to see how uh, reading scores might improve given the emphasis on science of teaching reading training. Uh, another important factor is the uh, looking at the Matthew effect it's because some students never fully recover from the lack of early reading development. We know that to be true, and that's uh, termed as the Matthew effect. And the Matthew effect is a reality for a significant portion of Hispanic students in our region. And the Matthew effect basically is, is uh, the name is taken from the biblical story of Matthew and the parable of the talents where uh, the key phrase there is that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's a story, it's a parable in the Bible about how a master goes away and, and different slaves uh, either uh, increases the master's wealth or uh, it's, it stays about the same and the master punishes those who don't increase the wealth, which is kind of like a really cruel story but it does reveal how the key factor of how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And this kind of like uh, is attributed to the, the conclusion of the Matthew effect in that good readers, those one out of, you know, those one out of six students that do manage to read well by the time they're in early childhood continue to improve at a, at a greater rate. So in other words, good readers get even better because they're presented more challenging material to read and they can handle it. Whereas poor readers never seem to fully recover and uh, they kind of stay at the bottom. And this data is wholly true for uh, students in the Laredo region. And so, one of the things that, uh, one of the, some of the implications for this is, of course, uh, being conscious of how uh, young males, especially young males in low socioeconomic conditions, are at risk for uh, low literacy, for more literacy challenges. And so we have to begin to differentiate in terms of gender, how to best teach males and get them, get them involved in reading. Uh, another th thing is uh, the increase of digital technology in schools. So it, there's a, a kind of like more use of digital technology. And uh, a lot of science of re reading research shows that uh, digital technology doesn't necessarily support reading instruction. In other words, if you have a choice between reading a book or a paper version of text or simply plain text, uh, students are unencumbered by other things. Whereas if there's too much illustration or digital technology taking hold in the, in the presentation, uh, children tend to focus more on the graphics and the use of digital technology. So it's a bit of a distraction now, we're never going to get rid of technology in schools, and it's just an integral part of social media, it's part of our lives, but we have to consider how to balance uh, reading print media and also having children write, you know, on paper and uh, use those things. So, science of reading claims that not learning to properly read early in school is a source of these reading deficiencies. So perhaps this requirement for science of reading can help improve scores. And so uh, again, the use of digital technology uh, might, might encumber uh, reading proficiency for many students. Boys in particular, I think, are, are more inclined to game, to participate in video gaming, and that can have uh, 
detrimental effects in terms of their ability to engage in deep reading or a consistent disciplined reading practice that will help them in school. Another thing is considering the differences between ethnic groups, like uh, especially Asian groups, and I think that support for home-based early literacy instruction in the family is important. Uh, I can't really speak exactly why those differences occur, but I know that they do, and it seems that Asian American families seem to have more of a family orientation to support education, and that's clearly evident in the uh, reading scores, whereas um, maybe in some Hispanic families, there isn't as stringent of an emphasis on education. Again, these cultural differences are still require a lot of uh, research. And uh, another thing that would be a factor for those students who speak Spanish, we need to really emphasize the importance of native language instruction as a base, as a foundation for second language literacy learning. So I believe that to kind of begin to conclude this presentation, I believe that we need to explore the cultural variables that continue to confound reading performance across different racial and ethnic groups. I think we need to do a cross-cultural analysis of homeschool community practices. Those are needed to understand uh, these variations, what's going on in terms of access to reading materials, what's going on in the community, what's going on with role models, how, how do these students perceive different role models in terms of reading performance. Another key factor would be gender-based variations in reading development. And uh, we know it's true that boys and girls have different reading preferences. And we need to improve uh, the motivation and the attitude toward reading for low-income males who continue to fall behind. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your consideration of uh, the demographic trends and uh, in literacy in the Laredo region.